Happy Monday, Monday, Monday. You ready to do this? I got a, a buddy of yours who's just south of you, but technically he's originally north of you. But right now you can be stuck in the middle with you. It's Steve. Oh, oh my God. God. 49. What kind of an introduction was that, Steve? <laughs> So ridiculous. <laughs> it's one of a kind. <laughs> Dude, I got to tell you, th- this has got to be one of the most creative years when it comes to people's names. I mean, because look at yours, Stee. Um, there, there's Corey, the way that she spells Corey, and, and there's Bias, uh-huh. and, and you're talking to some freak named Arrow. What the hell is this all about? <laughs> I like it. It keeps things interesting. It does. But but the marketing side of it, because, I mean, growing up inside the terrestrial radio world, I had more program directors and consultants that were very angry with me because I wouldn't change my name. Are they approaching you the same way? No, not at all. Um, that they, Actually, um, they liked my name. <laughs> they really liked it. And I was like, I'm glad that you like it. I remember it and back in the past, uh, my name was an issue. Um, Because they didn't understand it, but it's like nothing to understand. It it is something to understand, but it's not that that different. You know, it's just Steve. Yeah. Steve with no V, you know. <laughs> I, I could totally see it on T-shirts, but we live in this age of T-shirts right now, where where all of these fans of life are wearing T-shirts, but they have no idea who they're wearing on their shirt, what the band is, what the musician is, and I'm wondering if we need to take the T-shirt to a newer level. You know what? I think that it's so funny you pointed that out because I will see, you know, I, I guess I'll see people with shirts and now it's, it'll be somebody I love. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I love that shirt. And they're like, well, thanks. And I'm like, what's your favorite song? And they're like, I don't know who this is. It mm-hmm. just looks cool. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I thought I was the only person that noticed that that was the thing. So it's really cool to hear you say it. Well, because to me, a T-shirt is a conversation starter because, I mean, I've worked for for radio stations that said, OK, well, we're, we're going to put the logo on the back and, and nothing on the front because we, we want people in the back to go, oh, I listen to that radio station all the time. I mean, there's there's so much research that goes into the creation of a T-shirt. Yeah. Even for me, I was thinking about creating some merch finally, especially being on, you know, the show. Um, I haven't done merch in years, but I'm even I'm like, I don't know what to do because I don't I want it to be cool. I want it to be something you can wear, not just it be a merch piece that's hanging up in your closet. But like even for me, I, it intimidates me at this point because I don't even know what to do. Mm -hmm. And it should be a conversation starter. You're right. Yeah, I'll tell you what, but when it comes to T-shirts or any kind of clothing, if if I were a rock star and I found my T-shirt on someone's bathroom floor, oh, my God, I don't think I would do well. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's the point. Yes, you get it. <laughs> that's funny. So so being a part of Bluffton, South Carolina, you ever get up here to Charlotte? Yes. Yes, I do all the time. Um, I used to get um, to Charlotte, actually, in the beginning of the uh, Ste and Ear Candy's career. We were in Charlotte playing more than we are now. Yeah, um, yeah. And it sucks because I really love the crowd there. I loved playing in Charlotte and and being from D.C. There's actually kind of a go-go scene in in Charlotte. You know, Um, there are people that actually appreciate go-go music in Charlotte. Yeah. So that was one of the things that attracted me to the area. But, yeah, we love Charlotte. Are you kidding me? There's a big push right now uh, to try to get Charlotte to be a music city. I I mean, the thing about it is that music has always been here. In fact, they always say here in Charlotte, especially Arthur Smith used to say the story all the time, that Charlotte was the original Nashville. It's just that Charlotte didn't want to host it. And it's like, oh, Uh, oh, well, okay. then, Then let's get back to some music then. Yeah, I think it would be awesome. I mean, it would just be so cool to have another music music town, music city so close, you know, um, and one that is easy for me to get to and I've played before. So yeah, that would be awesome. There was a few there were a few venues um back in the day. Uh, I don't even remember the names of them, but I was always told See, you and Ear Candy should play there, and you should play there. But we, at the time, we were so new, we weren't big enough to even book it. But now it's a different story. Yeah, but you, you know how some of those clubs are here in Charlotte, though. And, you know, as long as the lights are out, it looks really cool. But if you have to set up that stage with the lights on, you're sitting there going, oh, my God. Ah, <laughs> uh, you are No comment. Yeah. <laughs> now, now you, bring, you bring up a style of music that a lot of listeners may not understand. Go-go music. What is go-go music? Oh, go-go music is a native style of music uh, from my home city of 
Washington, D.C. And what I, the way I always like to describe Go-Go is it's funk with heavy percussion, oh um, with God. some sort of African influences in there too. Um, it's a type of music that when you hear it, it's just really, really difficult to stop, like to not move. You know, it just gives you that that thing. It's, it's like ultimate swag to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, being a mobile entertainer, the one thing that I really love about being on that stage is when that beat gets inside somebody's heart and they can't control their body movement. That to me is like, right. oh, this is what I'm living for. Yes, yes, I love it. Um, I, have a, I have actually uh, two two go-go records of my own that are originals um, that, I mean, it, there's a song I have called Don't Ya. When we play Don't Ya, it's like, <laughs> no one can be moving and as soon as we do that one it's like everybody gets up I don't even understand it it's it's crazy but it's that go go thing and it's not even it's not even authentic go go it's kind of like it's got a pop feel to it you know so it could be radio friendly but even with the base of go go in it people still cannot like sit still you bring up a uh, radio friendly. Uh, let's let's talk about that a bit because I mean, when I first got into radio, it was just radio or television, and then this thing called MTV came along. These days, <laughs> there are so many outlets for music. What what about that Spotify or that iHeartRadio listen and those hundreds of thousands of hits that you're getting versus well, I can get you on three times a day on on terrestrial radio. Oh, for my myself, oh my goodness. <laughs> you wanna know what's funny about you asking me that? It's it's evolved over the years. Yeah. And it's only evolved because the landscape has evolved. So, you know, I would say I'll let's use Don't You for it. An example. Don't You came out in twenty fourteen. That's how old that song is. And back in those days, my main goal, I wanted, I wanted Don't You on the radio. Mm -hmm. I wanted it on the radio. I wanted it played all the time. I wanted it to be the next biggest hit after Bruno Mars. <laughs> I wanted to be that, <laughs> you know? Um, and today, I think that what's most important for me as an artist is just to create music that is like a part of people's lives. Mm -hmm. So however I can get it to you, that's really what's important. And I'm going to come up with a little bit of a budget and push my music as much as I can as an independent artist and any platforms or radio stations that are open to playing it and they think that their listeners will like it and we can work out however we can work it out, I would like that as well. But it's not so specific um, to like what it is other than I want this to be a part of people's lives. Because I remember being young and I remember my favorite songs growing up and I remember that now I'm still listening to those songs. So that's important. Funny you say that because I did a, a performance just, uh, just a couple of days ago and somebody comes up and they go, man, you need to play some old school funk like Car Wash from Rolls Royce. I'm going, Car Wash? That was a pop hit, man. <laughs> what are you talking See? about? <laughs> Evolution, man. Evolution. <laughs> yeah, but don't, you, don't you love music, though, the way that it can be planted in any generation and, and it grows and it just, it just it's just endless. Once you set it free it's like it, it's like kudzu dude yeah i mean but you have to as a creative and i think uh, i speak for a lot of creative people you have to be willing to let your song go and yep. also let it be interpreted however it's going to be interpreted in any space and time you know that's that's a lot of the reasons why so many of my you know friends are like oh i don't want to put it out i don't want to put it out i just need the right moment and i'm like yo just put it out you know because this could be the moment where it will become timeless and your fans children will listen to your songs and it may be a pop hit today and 20 years it could be a funk hit and 20 years it could be an r <laughs> hit either way someone's going to listen to it it's going to be a part of their lives so i tell them all the time just relax i love music in that in that regard that is so true and the reason why i bring that up is because the uh, I, I i know when you guys are up to something because it, it's like a, you know three or four years after we've had this conversation all of a sudden i start seeing your interviews popping up like you wouldn't believe and it's like what is he up to i gotta go see what <laughs> he has just released because suddenly his interviews are hot again I love that. Are you kidding me? As long as I can be relevant in, you know, making music and still doing what I love to do. I mean, I would love to do it until the day I croak. But, <laughs> you know, we'll see if I have the tenacity to do that, because I'm not going to lie to you. You know, the way that the industry can be 
it can be so it can be so you know such a letdown sometimes you're like oh but i believed in that project so much you know and and it goes nowhere so you know you just got to keep your own you know oil going what do you do during those moments when you put your entire self into a, a several songs or even just one song, and then you, you, you come back three or four years later and you go, what was I thinking? I mean, do, do you believe in the art of the moment? Yeah, I do. Actually, I really, really do. I put out a project in 2015. It was called the Atypical Playlist. And it was the Atypical Playlist because it was just something I, well, I was being very experimental at the time. I did some, some like, trip hop dream oh my god crap i was doing all kinds of stuff at that time and when i look back at the project i think that the project was great i just think that it was a mess and if i was in my mind now i think i can make the same record but it would be more cohesive and make more sense um it's the funniest thing because that record was actually my cousin matthew who passed away before Mm. i got on the show it was his favorite record i ever did And I hated it so much after (laughs) listening to it like five years later, I pulled it. So it's not even in print anymore. Oh, my God. But he got so mad at me because, you know, nobody has CD players anymore and he has it on CDs. Like, why would you pull it off Apple Music? I used to listen to it on my walks. And I'm like, man, I'll put it back out. You know, and I told him I put it back out. I never got the chance. But yes, to your point that's the prime example of me doing things in the moment and like thinking about it later and being like, man, I don't know about that. John. <laughs> you and I have something <laughs> in common weddings. I've been a wedding DJ since 1992. You, you are a wedding singer, dude. How, how I, do you um, sit down and have those meetings in this modern age where you've got the attention of the bride and groom for maybe 22 seconds? It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, and I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this on the record. You know, weddings are not my favorite thing to do. Right. right. Um, they are, a, they can be a lot. What people don't understand about doing weddings, especially if you like your, you know, you're doing the music and you're doing the announcements. That's a lot of pressure because this is somebody's special day. Yep. And you don't want to screw up names or, you know, play the wrong first dance song or any of that stuff. And they have a lot of requests a lot of times. Some people's weddings are full on productions. So, you know, I just smile and, you know, and I'll get the attention of the bride and groom for five seconds. And I'm like, hey, I just want to go over your, you know, bridal party names real quick. And they'll tell them to me real fast and I'll forget them. And, you know, I even have one, I'll never forget the very first wedding I ever did. Every single person in the bridal party was of a different nationality. Oh no! Different nationality, different. The 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 names were crazy, and I actually nailed every single name. I was very proud of myself, mm-hmm. but it just it, it was too much, you know. And I'm just like, I just want to sing, man, you know. Mm-hmm. Just want to say. Yeah, I, I just had a celebration where they, 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 it involved a candle lighting and there had to be 18 different songs. And she, about 45 minutes before the performance, came in and changed seven of them. And and it was like, no. oh my God! Smile, smile, smile! Do not let, do not wear it, do not wear it. I mean, it, it, oh, they, it, what? He, oh my God! I was so scared. Yeah. Um, that sounds like the epitome of a nightmare. Yeah. Um, we're talking about a nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's scary to Freddy Krueger to me. I can't, man. But yeah, you know, I would love to, you know, I think the, the dream is just to be able to be Steve and to play venues, sell tickets, play to the fans. And don't ever get it twisted. I'm not, I'm not, you know, talking down on doing weddings because to be honest with you, I, I learned a lot from doing yeah, wedding, me too. you know, too. and, and, and I love it. I mean, you, you were a wedding DJ and, and you, you're doing what you're doing right now on the level you're doing it. And a lot of what you learned and people's reactions in real time is from doing weddings. So Absolutely. it's the same for me. You know, I, I appreciate the time that I've had doing weddings. I have probably one more on the book. I'm not sure if I'm going to do any more. It, but you never know. I'll say never say never. Yep, yep. How do you like the way that live music has really kind of taken over the South in the way that grocery stores now have Thursday nights with live entertainers? Oh, my goodness. Let me tell you something. I'm actually really appreciative of the way that live music has really caught on here because, you know, um, we play 
everywhere, you know, and we're appreciated for it. You know, even before I got on the show, you know, we had been a band, Steve and Ear Candy had been a band for nine years um, down here. And I'm just going to be honest, we had a fan base, a very strong fan base before we got on the show. And the show just magnified what we already had. But we were able to continue to work for nine years because, you know, over the years, it would just be another place for us to play. Another venue just open up and we're doing music at this place. And it was a place that never thought about doing music before, just like you said at the grocery store. You know, it's like crazy things like that. And we would we would be able to be seen everywhere. I love it. Yeah. Where can people go to find out more about you, Steve, and and, and to really embrace everything that you've been doing? Oh, I would love that. I appreciate you for saying that, Um, talking about where they can go. So that way you can go. It will be (laughs) (laughs) www.steemusicworld.com. Steemusicworld.com. Yeah, that's where everything you need to know from the band, where we're going to be, Instagram, Facebook, it's all in one place. And he did say Stee and not Steve. So get, don't put Correct. that don't put that V in there. It's S T E E. Yes. <laughs> one day people won't won't make that mistake anymore. That'll be cool one day. <laughs> uh, next time you're up in Charlotte, dude, we got to get together and we got to have lunch, have dinner, have something so we can have a real face to face conversation. Uh yeah. Are you kidding me? I would love that. You're only like three hours from me. That's it's not, not bad. even that, that far. That's nothing here no, in the South. <laughs> not at all. Are you kidding me? I'm from D.C. where going five miles down the road is three hours yeah, that's right. because that's... everything's a parking lot. <laughs> so you know I'm not complaining. <laughs> well, you be brilliant today, okay, sir? Thank you so much, and thank you for having me.